I've recently been looking through some old radcoms. Well, actually, old radcoms aren't radcoms. They are either the Bulletin or the Radio Communication Magazine from the RSGB. But anyway, um, this particular antenna that I saw in Technical Topics took my eye because I thought it would be suitable for a small garden. Um, there's not too much detail about the antenna, but I think the concept is, uh, is worth looking at. This particular antenna appeared in Radio Communication 1984, March edition. And uh, I thought um, I'd actually just show you our advert uh, for that year, or that month in 1984, and look at some of the prices. Now, there's a transceiver there for around about £750. Believe it or not, today that would cost around about £3,000. Quite staggering. I suppose, strictly speaking, a loop would be expected to be a circle. But I think in amateur radio terms, we are quite happy to accept that loops can be square as well as round. And this particular one is a rectangle, and it has dimensions on the horizontal side which are somewhat longer than the vertical side. And I think this was done in order to make it easier to erect. And if you look at the drawing, the actual vertical sides are only 22 foot high, which means to say that it doesn't require an awful lot in terms of masts in order to support it. You can actually feed a loop antenna anywhere around its circumference. Generally speaking, if you feed the loop antenna on the horizontal section, you'll get predominantly horizontal radiation. And likewise, if you feed it on the vertical side, you'll get predominantly vertical radiation. Now, the feed impedance of a loop is pretty low, but uh, I would suggest if you're going to do a experiment with this antenna, go for a 4 to 1 button and you'll probably get quite good results and feed it with 52 ohm coax cable. There's actually no mention of how high it is above the ground, but as there is a switch that you need to reach in order to switch in 80 metres, I would assume that it's no higher than around about six or seven feet above the ground, in other words, two or three metres maximum. By the way, I should have mentioned that the original was designed to be fed with 75 ohm twin feeder, but I think these days most people would opt for a coax cable arrangement. Now let's take a look at this antenna. If we remove the switch and it becomes a complete loop, then it's resonant on 40 metres. It's actually a full wave on 40 metres. And loops work on harmonics because the harmonic of 40 metres is 20 metres. It becomes a two wavelength loop and so on through to 10 metres. So it should cover 40 metres, 20 metres, 15 metres and 10 metres. A multiband antenna. Very convenient. It fits into a smallish space. Now, if we put a switch in the bottom of this antenna and open that switch, that antenna then becomes a half wave. It's sort of like a bent half wave. And it's resonant on 80 meter band. So open the switch to break the loop and we have an 80 meter dipole that's sort of bent around the garden. But as we know, bent antennas work pretty well anyway. Now it's low for 80 meters and you'll get high angle radiation. But a lot of people use 80 meters as a chat band and it should work pretty well. It does mean, of course, you've got to go out in the garden and open a switch. Now, there's a high voltage point um, on 80 meters, so you have to be careful. And also, the switch needs to be able to cope with that sort of voltage. But um, a sort of a, a you know a sort of fairly robust switch should do. You can fabricate something with a bit of wire, a couple of bits of wire, and so forth. Just remember to make sure that you're not transmitting at the time <laughs> the time you uh, attempt to open or close the switch. Uh, so then you have an antenna which covers 80, 40, 20, 15 and 10 in a fairly small space and it doesn't require too much in the way of support. All you need is some wire, a bit of coax cable um, and a bit of cord and so forth and uh, you're almost there. So if you feel like trying this then I think it's worth a try. Now in technical topics they never really gave too much information about the results. It was more ideas. But I think this one is worth trying. So if you feel like uh, going out in the garden and um, 
messing about in the winter, then give this one a try. It uh, may well be an interesting antenna. As usual, thank you for watching this channel. Much appreciate your support. Don't forget to press the subscribe button. It just gives us some indi indication as to uh, whether the, the channel is uh, of interest or the particular subject is of interest and so forth. And uh, in the meantime, enjoy your ham radio. Take care. And as usual, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.